Doctor, uh, they've, they've all been running under time, uh, so there's extra time if you need That's it. That's great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to uh, members of the uh, committee for the opportunity today. And I want to thank the local residents with whom I had a great conversation uh, before the meeting today, and, and they had a number of good questions. What I'd like to do is, is chat a little bit with you and discuss what is truly a revol revolution caused by technology. The chairman alluded to it. And this is the natural gas revolution in the country today. The game has changed, the revolution is here, the paradigm has shifted, and there is no going back. This is a piece of shale from 8,000 feet below the prairie of Oklahoma, and I'd like to pass this around to the committee, and also uh, it's fine to pass it around to the audience, too. The natural gas is actually trapped in the pores of this core sample, and this is the key to the revolution. What I'd like to do is start with a little geology lesson here. This is geology for non-geologists. You can follow either in the printed testimony or on the screen, but traditionally we were looking for oil and gas that was um, produced in that lower band, the gray area there, source rocks. These are shales that I'm referring to here. And that oil and gas uh, cooked for 340 million years, uh, little critters and plants, uh, would migrate through porous uh, uh, zones up until they were trapped by an impermeable layer of rock. And you can see that shown there toward the right in the, the small red area. Well, that led us to find, or try to find, a number of these little trapped areas, and that's why you had uh, so many wildcat wells that were less successful or more. And then uh, back in the, um, in the 1990s, um, beginning in Texas, and I'll have more to say about that, George Mitchell had the idea that we ought to be able to produce natural gas right from the source rock. And he started uh, drilling vertical wells and, and, and uh, fracturing them, and the economics just didn't work out all that well. So in 2002, uh, Devon Energy that acquired Mitchell began to marry the technologies of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling. So in 2002, uh, Devon Energy that acquired Mitchell began to marry the technologies of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling. to begin to produce gas from the Barnett Shale of Texas. That's a picture of where it is. We'll go to the next slide, and um, you'll see that uh, in the uh, early part of last decade, the uh, wells were shown on the black line. Those were vertical wells. You can see production rates and, and the production tailing off out into the future. And then look what happened with the blue line there when we started marrying the hydraulic fracturing and the, uh, the hydraulic fracturing. Uh, to produce this gas. Huge initial production rates in these wells may last 40 or 50 years. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, you can see the history of the shale plays around the country with the use of this marriage of technology. And you can go to the next slide to see the projections that EIA has in the dark blue there for our gas resource production into the future based on this, this technology. This is a depiction of the areas around the country where we have uh, shale fairways and, and the ability potentially to produce a lot more natural gas for this country. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see that that has already begun to have a very significant uh, positive effect on consumer prices. Those are three different projections by the EIA over the past three years, ending up with that red line on the bottom that show the different price projections based on this increased supply.
And if you go past this slide to hydraulic fracturing, this is what I'd like to spend a little more time on. Hydraulic fracturing is, of course, the putting of large quantities of water sand into the ground, pulling the water out, the sand, holding the fractures open. And we have a little uh, bit of animation here that will show you uh, what it is that we're doing. First of all, um, we uh, drill the well, and then we're going to rerun it from the beginning here, hopefully. Um, and you'll see that the well is drilled, obviously, from uh, the surface out into a lateral that can be many thousands of feet long. And uh, then once we complete the drilling of the well, I'll tell you what, I'm not sure that that's going to work so well, but we'll just uh, talk about it from here. Um, you can see that, that the, the drill string is pulled out, and then the well is actually uh, perforated uh, with a perf gun. You see that happening here into the shale formation. And after the well is uh, perforated, to, you can see the, the length of the distance of the perforations. Then the sand and water with some additives is put in under very high pressure, and we begin to frack the, the shale formation. The um, uh, frack stages can be multiple. Here we put a plug, and then we'll come back into the well and do the same kind of fracture stimulation treatment along that horizontal part of the well. And then the water and, uh, uh, is flowed out. The sand stays holding the, uh, the fractures open. And the surface equipment is by and large removed and only a small amount remaining in the gas is produced. So that's basically the hydraulic fracturing process. If we go to the next slide, you'll see that one of the big concerns about hydraulic fracturing is addressed here by our well construction. We, uh, under state regulation throughout the country, um, put pipe, or what we call casing, through any freshwater zones that usually occur hundreds of feet below the surface, and we may be fracking as much as 15,000 feet below the surface, but we seal off the water zones before we start the operation, and you can see that depicted here. If you go to the next slide, you'll see just a, a depiction of the equipment that's used on a site. That equipment virtually all goes away after the frack job. And uh, you see some numbers there with regard to the amount of water we use. We can talk about that later. If you look at the frack fluid components that have gotten a lot of attention recently, uh, the bottom line is that uh, 99.5% of what goes into these wells is basically sand and water. And um, of course most of that obviously being water. And the fluids are not all that mysterious. In fact, uh, there's a very robust website that has been in operation now for a little over a month called Frack Focus that was actually created and is operated by state regulators under the Groundwater Protection Council and the IOGCC on which producers are beginning to post what goes into every well that's hydraulically fractured. This is a shot of the uh, actual screen, the form that you can call up. You can search this by uh, well location, by company, by uh, coordinates, by API well number, lots of different ways and find out what's in any well that's hydraulically fractured once this site uh, is fully operational and all the postings are on it. The site is also extremely good, and I'll say this to the residents and the audience and to others, because it, it actually has wonderful explanations in a very robust way about what I've talked about in terms of why we hydraulically fracture wells, how it's done, what the additives are, what they're used for, and uh, a lot of other information that I think uh, takes some of the mystery about hydraulic fracturing away. 
So we uh, conclude by saying that hydraulic fracturing has been, as the chairman pointed out, in use for many decades. Our first well in Oklahoma was uh, fracked in uh, March of 1949. We've done 100,000 of them. And uh, well regulated by states, frac focus is up for the fluid disclosures. Uh, and we are continually improving our industry practices and the states are continuing to work to make sure that they have the right regulatory framework for all of this. So with that, I'll conclude and I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you. You've answered many questions just by your presentation.